praise God before we do it. A lot of people, what they do in life, they always love to talk about all the good things that uh, God's going to do for them as long as it's something good for them. They usually don't give God glory, honor, or praise at all before they do. Amen. What we like to do, we like to take, 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 because it's the way society's always taught us. If someone can't give you something, mm -hmm. we don't really need to talk about it at all. Mm -hmm. But God always turns it upside down the way it's supposed to be. Amen. And says, if you give me praise and humble yourself, he says, I'll open it up for you. Amen. So we'll start by uh, reading from Psalms 103, verses 1 through 4. And when someone gets me, just say amen. I'm going to read out of the New International Version and a bunch of other cross-reference versions and whatever. Which on whatever part, part you have in your Bible, you know it's all good. And all right. It says, The Psalm of David, Bless the Lord on my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord on my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all iniquities, who heals all diseases. What was the key thing that uh, he started with on that? What was the key thing that the Psalm of David, if you read any of and most of the Psalms you know, that David's written, and other ones that are taken from everywhere else. Almost everyone always gives a joyful voice to, uh, to God, always praising Him, always telling Him what good He's done for us, always saying He's the person that broke chains, He's the one that brought us out of Egypt, whatever it may be. They always give God praise. If you want healing in your life, the first thing you should always do is to humble yourself. Some people like to get down on their knees and prostrate themselves and make sure that God knows what they mean. Sometimes you don't have the either physically can't do it or physically you're not in a spot where you can do it. The only thing that God wants to know is what's in your heart. Do you praise me? Do you believe it in your heart? And then you go into whatever blessings, whatever miracles you want to receive. Because it says, praise the Lord my soul, forgetting all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. He didn't say it was like some disease. Because a lot of Christians like to be super Christians and say, what I do is I believe God myself for healing of a cold. Or I believe God myself for healing of the flu. But I don't know if he wants to heal everything. So I'll go get some super Christians. God's like, no, no, no. I said that if you praise the Lord all your soul and he'll forget not all your benefits, he said, I'll heal everything for you. Amen. It's like uh, Dad was saying last week, or was a week before, it's good to go to the elders of the church. But in those quiet times when you're far away from a church or it's far away from Sunday or your phone's not working, it's good to know that you can do it. Amen. It's good to know that it's deep within you. Amen. And all you got to do is just sit right there and pray. And believe in your heart, and God will give it to you. Amen. And what we'll do is we'll jump over to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 12. And again, when you get there, just say amen. Because <coughs> I look around at all the different stuff that's on TV, all the people talking about Christians, all the people making fun of the Christian faith. I mean, I hear Christians bringing up their Bible and they're thumping it, saying that we need to do this, and God, and God's like, don't worry about those people. Amen. He's like, I've been around since time was, wasn't even a twinkle in my eye. I'll be around long after these people are making fun of me. Long or dead and buried. And he has to judge them later in eternity. He said, I'll still be right here. The only thing you have to do with the gospel, the only thing you have to do if you want to know that it works, if only you have to do if you want healing, the only thing you have to do if you want anything in life is no one thing. The Bible is true. And believe it in your heart that the Son, Jesus Christ, died for you. And you can have anything you want. It says in Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 12. Then watch yourself that you do not forget the Lord who brought you from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. Amen. That's the problem a lot of Christians have. Mm -hmm. When we're brand new Christians, we believe in all of this. We believe that God sent His Son Jesus Christ to die for us. We believe that healing is ours. We believe that speaking in tongues is something great. We believe that laying hands on the sick is something we can do. But what happens a lot of times, like happens with the people in the Old Testament, you get out of it long enough, you start thinking it's you. You start thinking whatever happened, it didn't happen because God gave it to me. It happened because of my power. It happened because I'm a super Christian, and I believe I'm on an ascended level, and everybody else is just right here. And what happens is once we start believing and go down that road, mm -hmm. we have to watch yourself. And it says that you don't forget the Lord who brought you from the land of Egypt. What you got to do is replace that, because remember, everything in the Bible is put there for a reason, so you can identify it with your time. At that time, it was them coming out of Egypt. Let's say with you, it was getting out of that bad marriage. 
getting out of that bad family, getting out of that bad job, being healed from whatever sickness or disease that was holding you back, whatever mindset that was keeping you quiet, whatever chains that were broken, God brought you out of it. And he said, don't forget what he brought you from. He brought you out of that house of slavery. Whatever you were a slave to, whether it be whatever sickness, disease, or whatever you were watching, or whatever people were holding you back, he brought you out of that. And if you remember that, and you break those chains, God said, I will heal you. He said, I'll bring you out, I'll redeem you, and you'll have healing in everything, every disease. He said, all he has for you to do is just praise the Lord my soul and forget not his benefits. Now we'll jump over to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11. Because remember, everything in the Bible is confirmed by what, 2 or 3? Amen. Is that there? Isn't that right? Amen. All right. It says in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11, Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his ordinances and his statutes, which I am communicating to you today. And replace that by any preacher that professes themselves to be a true Christian that believes in Jesus Christ, that when they tell you these different things, if you're sitting there and listening to it, guess what? Now you know. And now that you know, beware that you not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments. That's one thing a lot of Christians love to do of talking to people saying, Jason, it's like a job. I can't say what job it was because, you know, don't want to name names. I can't believe in the gospel because it's too hard. You have to do all these things. I believe that these people fell and this had to have happened. So God doesn't want me really to do that. And God doesn't want me to do that because that's too hard. He wants me to do the easy stuff. I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure it says right here. Beware that you don't forget the Lord your God by keeping his commandments. It didn't say, beware the Lord your God by not keeping some of his commandments. Or the ones that look pretty and fluffily and it's very easy for you to follow in good times. Or it said, all the commandments. Keeping his commandments and his ordinances and his statutes, which I am commanding to you today. When God tells you don't do this, he's not saying don't do this on Monday or Tuesday, but you could do it Wednesday through Sunday. Or some people that will do everything that's big enough to do Monday through Friday, but then they profess they're Christians on Sunday. And Saturday's that break, you know, to get themselves right. One person even said that they want to, was I watching some game show, they want to be, be a devil on Saturday, but they want to be an angel on Sunday. God's like, that is not what I told you to do. He says, I want you to keep my commandments. I want you to make sure you follow the ordinances and the statutes. Because people are like, Jason, but what does that have to do with healing? If you can't keep a simple commandment, you can't stick with what God told you, how can he heal you? Amen. How can he bring you out of whatever you need to bring you out of and keep you out of it if you don't follow it? Right. It's like someone winning, let's say, of, there's a person, say, they're homeless, and they were homeless all of their life. Someone walks over, hands them money, gets them a job, and they said, all I ask you to do is to do this so you don't fall back into it. Well, they get all that stuff and hand it to them. They look nice, get all sprissied up. And two weeks, a month, two months later, right back on the streets again. You know why? Because they didn't keep the commandments. They didn't stick to the rules they were supposed to do. Because let's say, like, God heals you from a disease or whatever else it was, the situation you're in. But then you fall back to that person. You fall back into that job. You fall back into that family. You fall back into that crowd of friends. You'll be back where you were before. Yeah. God's not doing this because he wants to make it hard for you. He's doing it so you can continue to be blessed. Yeah. He wants to do this so you can be healed, so you can open up your heart to believe you can be healed. All right, what's up over the first Chronicles chapter 16, verse 12? Because remember, everything we're talking here, it keeps telling you, remember, beware, keep this. It's trying to build faith in you, knowing if you just keep doing it over and over, what happens with faith? Amen. You hear it over and over again, what's it saying? Faith comes by hearing. In hearing. In hearing. Because there is nothing you can do without doing it over and over again. Like people say, well, it becomes a habit if you do it like over a month. It becomes something that gets stuck in you. Your body basically will fight you because now it's a habit because it believes that's normal. It's almost like even your body knows. If I hear it over and over again, you do it over and over again, that must be what needs to be done. And that works for the good and the bad. God's just trying to tell you, these are, these are not something I just put there because I want you to do this. No, no. That's a law I put in place. Yeah. If you do it long enough, everything within you is going to fight you to keep doing that same thing. That's why it's so hard for someone that's a drinker, smoker, or whatever kind of thing they love to do to break it. Because the body believes that's what I'm supposed to do. Almost like there's a spirit that's like, if you do it, that's what you want me to do, so I'm going to stick to it. That's what God's saying. If you stick to it, you'll have it as a habit. You'll think this is normal. You'll think reading the gospel is normal. Giving God praise is normal. Telling people 
It's a good day today. Amen. Yes, everything around you is bad. Everything is falling apart. Remember, I believe in a God that knows I will come out. And because I'll come out, it is a good day. Amen. Focus on the good. And so don't sit there and dwell on the bad. Yes, the bad is there. Acknowledge it. But don't focus on that. Because that's just not good to do. Now we're over to 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 12. Remember his wonderful deeds which he has done, his marvels and the judgments from his mouth. Again, we're back to that remember. Remember what God's done for you. Remember what deeds he's done for you. Remember the marvels and judgments from his mouth. You can go throughout the entire Bible. Bible be like, well, that doesn't happen in today's life. Yes, it does. Did you wake up this morning? And we're just like, what do you mean? That's a miracle. Someone, someone went to sleep last night and didn't wake up. Someone drove to their house or drove to work and didn't make it. Amen. You have people that actually have babies every day that don't make it, Amen. but you make it. That's a miracle right there. Amen. The miracle is you got a job. A lot of people out there Amen. don't have jobs. Amen. The miracle is you're healthy enough to listen Praise to me God. speak. That's a miracle. Amen. Look at the small things. We take it for granted. And because we take it for granted, we don't think they're miracles. Uh -huh. Take like living in this country. People think it's normal to have free speech. People think it's normal to have men and women want to have equal pay. People think it's normal for someone that's like a different yeah. ethnicity to make it. That's not the same everywhere else. Somewhere else, someone's sitting in another country like, that's a miracle. Amen. That's what God's saying, remember. He's not saying, take yeah. it for granted. He's not saying, you shouldn't do this. Remember, every day is a miracle. Amen. Every little thing you take, like Daddy say in uh, church, <laughs> people said they can't believe in faith, so you sat down, didn't you? He said, what do you mean? You don't know if that chair is going to hold you up. Yeah. That's you, that's you using faith. That's a small miracle. You believe, why? Because it's happened over and over again. Almost like you developed a habit. You have faith now to support it. That that chair is going to support me. Yeah. You hop into your car, turn that key. That's and what happens when people, the car doesn't work? Everybody's just surprised everybody else. Like, why is this not working? That's what God's like. Treat me the same way. Amen. And I'll basically bring that healing to you. I'll bring whatever you want. Well, new finances, new job, whatever you need. He said, I'll open it up for you. Now we'll jump over to Psalms 116, verse 12. When you get there, just say amen. Amen. Because people, well, the first thing everybody likes to say whenever God does good for them, what do they like to say? So it's like it says in Psalms 116, verse 12. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? All the variations of the same verse. People always want to question, when God does something good for me, what shall I do for him? Why do we ask that question? Because we believe in life. Everything good that happens comes with a price. That's, what, that's true. It does come with a price. But here's the thing. The price already been paid. Amen. He's all we ask for you to do is to believe in me, to praise me, to believe in my son. That's all you have to render to him. That's all you need. That's why he said, remember, that's his price. Amen. Remember what I've done in the past. Remember Amen. what I promised you. I think it's a pretty easy price to pay. Amen. All he asks you to believe, and he'll give you anything you want. Because I like reading, because I was reading in the uh, New International Version, it says, what shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness? But it says in the study Bible, it says, what shall I render to the Lord Amen. for all his benefits toward me? Because you know, people like to say we're talking in that new religion, we're talking in that new language. We're not talking in a new language. We're not talking in a new religion. All we're talking is whatever variation is translated to for that dispensation or time period. People like want to say these and thou's. That's because it's the way they talk back then. Uh -huh. Everything in the Bible is written this one way. We just translate it over time Amen. to believe exactly what they believe. God's been the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. It's like long after you're dead and gone. Psalms 116 and 12 will still be there. Amen. Long after you're basically ashes, oh, yeah. Psalms 116 and 12 will still be there. Amen. Everything in the Bible has been there. It was tried to be destroyed. People hid it in clips, mm -hmm. hid it underground, and somehow it was found. Mm -hmm. How was something found when everything else in that time period was destroyed? Because I was like, I'll make sure it makes it. If I have to make I send it word of mouth and have people remember it, I'll do it that way to make sure it makes it. Now we have the internet. They'll destroy every piece of paper. Well, someone will find it in the corner of the internet, print it off, and it'll go through. Let me watch that one movie with Denzel Washington, the book of Eli, and every single Bible was destroyed. No one ever had it. They were just looking for it. And he had one man, a blind man, remember the Bible from beginning to end. He was like, Jason, that's fiction. No, no, no. I'm using it as a story. The guy's like, whatever I need to do, I'll make sure my word survives. Amen. All he asked for us to do was remember it. 
And if we remember it, what will happen? He'll give us all that we ask from him. Amen. Is that really hard to believe? Is that hard to do? Is that something, some little well, step you can't take? Well, it's like what that one song, every little step I take. Because <laughs> people sit there and they, they think that Christianity is so hard. God's like, it's pretty simple. Praise me. Believe in my son. And remember all the things I've told you. If you do that, you'll have healing. Amen. You'll have salvation. Amen. You'll have riches. That's right. Whatever you need, all God, God asks for you is remember me. That's all you need. So whenever you're thinking about healing, remember one thing. Praise God and remember him. And believe in Son Jesus Christ, you can have anything you need. And with that, I close. I hope something I've said has given someone some little wisdom.